so in the last lecture if you remember we started the fourier integral representation where the last two equations we derived equation 8 and equation 9 let's see the equation 8 first just for recapitulation your equation 8 is fx equals 2 by pi 0 to infinity 0 to infinity f t into cos of alpha t d t cos of alpha t d t into cos of alpha x into d alpha this was your equation 8. So, in this equation 8 if you set f of alpha capital F of alpha equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f t into cos of alpha t d t. If we substitute this one say this will be equation 10. This f alpha equals we are setting capital F alpha equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f t cos of alpha t d t. Then your f x you can write down as 2 by pi 0 to infinity f of alpha into cos of alpha x d alpha just this 0 to infinity f t cos alpha t this you are writing as f of alpha. So, f x will be root over 2 by pi since f alpha we have taken root over 2 by pi. So, f alpha is this thing into cos of alpha x into this one this is equation 11. Now, please note that this f of capital f of alpha is called the Fourier cosine transform Fourier cosine transform of f x. So, now actually from this representations we are defining what is Fourier cosine transform please note this one. If I have a function f x which is defined in 0 to infinity then the Fourier cosine transform of f x can be represented by the equation 10 and this we defining at f of alpha equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f t into cos of alpha t d t and this one. So, if in this equation 11 if you consider in this equation 11 suppose f alpha is given suppose this value of f alpha is given to me and f t is unknown function please note that in this 11 if f alpha sorry not this in this 11 if this f alpha is known to me and this f t is known then it is an integral equation of the function uh, f t it is an integral equation of the function f t and formula 11 gives the solution of that equation. So, please note that f alpha we call it as the Fourier cosine transform of the function f x and from here if I know f alpha then I can represent it in terms of f x also. Similarly, if you consider the equation 9 if you recall I am just writing again equation 9 is your 2 by pi 0 to infinity. 0 to infinity f t into sin of alpha t d t into sin of alpha x d alpha this is your equation 9. We can write the following equations from here say phi of alpha this is equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f t into sin of alpha t d t. We are setting this integral equals to phi of alpha which will be a function of alpha after integrating with respect to t. So, we are telling phi of alpha is this, this actually will be equation 12 and in that case your f x will be 
root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity phi of alpha into sin of alpha x d alpha say this will be equation 13. Therefore, in this case this phi of alpha this is known as Fourier Fourier sine transform we call it as the Fourier sine transform of the function f x. So, I hope it is clear now that if the function from here a function f x is there then the Fourier sine transform of the function will be psi of alpha which is nothing but root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f t into sin alpha t d t. So, just let me go back to the slides and tell you this one. So, in the equation 8 what you are doing equation 8 was this one f x equals 2 by pi 0 to infinity 0 to infinity f t into cos of alpha t d t into cos of alpha x d alpha on this equation if I put set f alpha equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f t into cos alpha t d t then 8 takes the form f x equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f alpha into cos of alpha x d x and this we call it as the f alpha that is this capital f alpha defined by 10 we call it as the Fourier cosine transform of the function f x. So, that the kernel is nothing but cos of alpha t and whenever capital F alpha is known to me you by evaluating the integral I can find out what is the corresponding function that is f x also I can evaluate this only we have told in 11 if we assume that f alpha is given and f t is unknown function then by evaluating the integral we can find out the value of f t and on the same way formula 11 gives the solution of that and on the basis of 9 on the basis of 9 means your this equation f x equals 2 by pi 0 to infinity 0 to infinity f t sin of alpha t d t into sin of alpha x d alpha using this equation I can obtain this if I assume that phi alpha equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f t into sin of alpha t d t and I can write down f x equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity phi alpha into sin of alpha x into d alpha and this again we call it this psi alpha phi alpha we call it as the Fourier sine transform of the function f x. So, we till now we define two things what is the Fourier sine transform what is the Fourier cosine transform for sine transform the kernel is sine of alpha t whereas for cosine transform the kernel here becomes cos of alpha t just like for Laplace it was e power i alpha x. Next we want to study the Fourier integral representation in the complex form. So, Fourier integral representation of the function f x you can write down like this your f x is 1 by pi 0 to infinity. So, earlier it was 0 to infinity now it becomes minus infinity to infinity f t into cos of alpha into t minus x into d t into d alpha say. So, Fourier integral representation of the function f x is like this 1 by pi 0 to infinity minus infinity to infinity f t into cos of alpha into t minus x d t into d alpha. This again we can write it in this particular form 1 by twice pi into minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity f t into cos of alpha into t minus x into d t into d alpha. 
we can write down this thing because your cos of alpha into alpha uh, sorry cos of alpha into t minus x is even function of alpha since cos of alpha into t minus x is an even function of alpha therefore this 0 to infinity i can write it using the property of definite integral minus infinity to infinity and that is the reason we have divided by 2 so i had the original representation of fx as this and since cos of alpha into t minus x is an even function therefore this 0 to infinity can be replaced by minus infinity to infinity and 2 will be divided over here again your you know this thing sin of alpha into t minus x is odd this is an odd function of alpha so since this is an odd function of alpha so i can write down the equation as 1 by 2 pi uh, the earlier equation whatever we wrote that is equation 2 actually and uh, this we can write down 1 by twice pi minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity again f t into sin of alpha into t minus x into d t into d alpha this will be say equation 3 since this is an odd function therefore the value always will be 0 so you multiply now 3 into basically minus i and add with 2 basically on this you multiply it by minus i and the equation to the last equation whatever we wrote add this equation if i am adding this then basically i have sin alpha into t minus x and there i have cos alpha into t minus x so these two together this will be 1 by twice pi minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha into t minus x into d t into d alpha say it is equation 4 this e power minus i alpha into t minus x i am getting from this cos of alpha into i will get a term of this i have not written cos of alpha into t minus x uh, plus i into sin of alpha into t minus x and by representing this one and we are right getting this one and this we call as the this equation 4 we call as complex form of fir fourier integral representation this is the complex form of the fourier integration uh, complex form of this one and this we can write down complex form of Fourier integral representation that is your f x can be written in this form 1 by twice pi minus infinity to infinity again minus infinity to infinity f t into e power i alpha into x minus t i can write down i x minus t into d t into d alpha this is say equation 5 and which is again <coughs> we in that case you will obtain the equation 5. So, if I choose 5 say I am choosing the equation 5 here if I choose 5 that is your f x again I can write down like this way 1 by root over twice pi into minus infinity to infinity e power i alpha x into I am just breaking it e power i alpha x I am bringing it out because it is not independent of t. So, 1 by root over twice pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha t d t into d alpha this is your equation 6. So, I have chosen not equation 4, but equation 5, which is another form. Then I am writing it like this. In this equation 6, say we are denoting this thing 
f x f of capital f of alpha equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha t d t. If I choose f alpha equals this integral inside integral basically 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha t d t which say this is equation 7. Then I can write down my f x as 1 by root over twice pi minus infinity to infinity f of alpha into e power i alpha x will come this e power i alpha x is here e power i alpha x into d alpha. Please note this thing that integral 6 and integral 7. So, if this integral 7 exists, then we call it as the Fourier transform of the function f x, where the kernel we are assuming as e power minus i alpha t. So, sorry this will be equation 8, this is equation 8 and this equation if it exists, if this integral exists, then this integral f alpha equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha t d t. This one we call as Fourier transform. This we call as Fourier transform of the function f t and here your kernel obviously is e power minus i alpha t. So, please note this one that this equation 7 that is f alpha equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha t d t is known as Fourier transform of the function f t where the kernel is e power minus i alpha t and we represent it like this Fourier transform of f t this is equals to f of alpha and which is nothing but 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha t into d t. So, if capital F alpha exists, then equation 8 if you see where we have defined f x equals the integral, this is known as the inverse Fourier transform of f alpha. So, from 8 if I know f alpha I can tell what is the value of f x. So, equation 8 known as the inverse Fourier transform inverse Fourier transform of f x and which we write as f x equals Fourier inverse of f of alpha and this is equals to 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f alpha into e power i alpha x into d alpha. So, this is say equation 10. So, basically your Fourier transform of f t is given by equation 9 and inverse Fourier transform of this one we call it inverse Fourier transform we can obtain from equation 10. Let us just see quickly here. Fourier integral representation of the function f x is this one as we have done it earlier f of t into cos of alpha into t minus x which can be written as minus infinity to infinity 0 to infinity can be represented by minus infinity to infinity because cos of alpha into t minus x is an even function from the properties of definite integral we can tell this. And also we know sin of alpha into t minus x is odd function. So, that value of this indefinite integral will be 0. Now, multiply equation 3 by minus i and if we add with the equation 2, I will obtain in e power form basically because you have the cos of alpha into t minus x and sin of alpha into t minus x and from here you can get this equation 4 this equation 4 we call it as the complex form of the Fourier integral 
representation. Please note this one, this equation 4 because we will use it again afterwards. So, once I am getting this, so f x equals 1 by twice pi minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity f t e power i alpha into x minus t d t into d alpha. This e power i alpha x I can bring outside the d t because alpha is independent. So, that I can write down the equation 6 as I told. Now, in 6 we are denoting f alpha capital F alpha equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha t. In that case, you can write down f x equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f alpha into e power i alpha x. Equation 7 basically known as the Fourier transform of the function f t, whereas equation 8 tells us the inverse Fourier transform of the function capital F of alpha. So, basically if I know the function f x, I can find out the Fourier transform of the function from equation 7, whereas if I know the Fourier transform of a function that is f alpha corresponding function or the inverse I can obtain from equation 8. Now, if this integral exists is known as the Fourier transform of the function which we are denoting as equation 9 basically now same thing we are saying and if the Fourier transform exists then value of f x can be obtained from this. So, equation 9 and 10 gives me these two forms over there. So, please note this thing that this equation 9 and 10 these two will be giving me the Fourier transform of the function as well as the inverse Fourier transform of the function f of x. Now, I told you about the equation 4. The equation 4 which I got the Fourier integral representation of the complex form in 4 if we put in equation 4 if we put alpha equals minus omega say. In that case your f x will be equals to 1 by twice pi minus infinity to infinity. This will be actually minus omega. So, the limit will be changing here that is plus infinity to minus infinity it will be this one is minus infinity to infinity f t into e power i omega into t minus x into d t into minus d omega. So, that this minus if I change it again 1 by twice pi this will be now minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i omega into I can make it x minus t into d t into d omega and this equals you can write down 1 by twice pi minus infinity to infinity this minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha into x minus t into d t into d alpha. Simply I am replacing omega by alpha nothing else I am doing. So, this equation is for a. In the case, so earlier I used equation 4 and I obtained equation 9 and 10 which are the Fourier transform of the function f x and the inverse Fourier transform of the function capital F alpha. Now, in 4 if I use alpha equals minus omega then f x I am writing like this 1 by twice pi minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity f t into e power minus i alpha into x minus t into d t into d alpha. So, instead of 4 if I consider 4 a means if I work with now equation 4 a then I will got game, get the some other form then 
f x equals 1 by root 2 pi again you can represent same way e power minus i alpha x 1 by root 2 pi into minus infinity to infinity f t into e power i alpha t into d t into d alpha this is say equation 11. So, now you denote here capital F of alpha equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power i alpha t d t this is say equation 12 then f x can be written as 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f alpha into e power minus i alpha x into d alpha. So, if I change in this particular form, then also equation 12 is known as the Fourier transform of the function f x, whereas inverse Fourier transform of f alpha can be obtained, this will be capital F alpha can be obtained from equation 13. So, effectively if you see equation 9, 10 can be used to find out the a Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform of the function and for 12, 13 also let me just write it again Fourier transform of f t this is equals to f of alpha and this is nothing but 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f t into e power i alpha t d t this is equation 14 and if I use this then Fourier inverse of the function of f of alpha this is equals f of x say this equals I can write down 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f of alpha into e power minus i alpha x into d alpha which is equation 15. So, therefore, what we are observing if you think about if you see the equation equation 9 and 10 or 11, 9 and 10 there the change was only e power minus i alpha t was here and in this case this was replaced by e power plus i alpha x. So, in both cases you will get the Fourier transform and please note that in the books somewhere they have used the kernel as e power minus i alpha t somewhere they have used the e power i alpha t. So, anyone can be used as an kernel either e power i alpha t or e power minus i alpha t and I can obtain the Fourier transform of the function accordingly either from equation 9 and 10 by getting the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform or I can use the equation 14 and 15 also to find out the Fourier transform and corresponding uh, corresponding inverse Fourier transform. So, in the next classes we will see next lecture we will see that how to find out the Fourier transform of some function. Thank you.